Welcome to HoopFest. Spokane's HoopFest is the world's largest three-on-three -three basketball tournament. Over 24,000 basketball players will participate in this year's event, supported by over 500 court monitors like you and over 2,000 other volunteers. The emphasis is on teamwork, good sportsmanship, and good family fun. Whether or not we achieve these goals depends on you. You can help us meet these goals with a positive attitude, a smile, and by maintaining control of the games in which you serve as a court monitor. This video is intended to give you the basics. You should supplement this video with a close reading of the rules. You'll have to enforce and interpret the rules. And as such, you should read and understand the rules before the teams take the court. There are 10 steps to a monitor's success. These steps will make your HoopFest experience a very positive one. Sign up, study and know the rules, attend a training session, go to monitor registration on the Thursday of HoopFest, show up on time and be present for the time you committed, know and enforce the rules, care for the court equipment and court area, regulate play as assigned, return the equipment at the end of the tournament, take pride and have fun. Court monitoring requires a significant amount of time during the weekend. Typically, you can plan on volunteering 11 to 12 hours on Saturday and 6 to 7 hours on Sunday. Be sure to plan ahead for the best possible experience. Each court at HoopFest will have at least one monitor assigned to it at all times. In some instances, as many as two monitors may be assigned to the same court. HoopFest officials will attempt to place you on a court where you'll have the most success. Monitors for youth courts, courts consisting of players entering grades 3 through 9, will call all fouls. On all other courts, players will be responsible for calling their own fouls. The exceptions are technical, flagrant, and intentional fouls. Monitors are the only ones who can call these fouls, and they will be explained later in the video. This is an official HoopFest court. Each court has a basket, key, free throw line, two-point arc, take-back line, and out-of-bounds line surrounding the court. The basket height for each court is 10 feet, with the exception of third and fourth grade courts, where the basket height is 8 feet. The free throw line is located here. All fouls, including player control fouls, result in one free throw, unless a basket was made when the foul occurred. In that situation, no additional foul shot will be awarded. All other players must be behind the shooter while attempting the shot. All fouls must be shot regardless of whether or not the player is in the act of shooting. Do not let players take the ball out of bounds or make up their own rules. The two-point arc is the dotted line that surrounds the key. Any player who releases the ball behind this arc will be awarded two points for a successful try. If the player's momentum carries over the line after the shot has left their hand, the shot will still count for two points. A basket where the player's foot was on the line will count as only one point. The take-back line is the dashed line between the two-point line and the out-of-bounds line in back. The ball will be taken back on each change of possession, regardless of whether or not a shot was attempted. Failure to take the ball back results in loss of possession and any points just scored. Taking it back means bringing your whole body and the ball behind the dashed take-back line, not the sidelines or two-point arc. After each stoppage, the next play is started when the team takes the ball behind the take-back line. The offensive player will get behind this line and check the ball to the defending player who will then bounce past the ball back. This will signify that the defending team is ready for play. The offensive team cannot dribble or shoot the ball and must pass it in. An unacceptable maneuver would be for the defensive player to cross the take-back line. The defensive player must remain behind the take-back line until the ball is passed into play. Possession will alternate after each made basket. There's no make it take it rule in HoopFest. The out of bounds lines are the solid lines running around the perimeter of the court. A ball out of bounds must be put back into play behind the back out of bounds line. The basket structure, padding, and structural supports are considered out of bounds. The actual backboard, including its face, top, bottom, and sides, are considered inbounds. On the Thursday before the games begin, you will pick up your court monitor bag and be ready to be a monitor. The bag you pick up at the designated location will contain three items. The first is a three-ring binder. The second is the scoring rack for the scorekeeper. And the third is the basketball. Keep an eye on the basketball in between games. Players will have a tendency to run off with the ball after their game.
Before each game, you'll meet with each team to discuss the HoopFest rules and policies and to stress the importance of good sportsmanship. Welcome to HoopFest. My name is Kevin. I'm going to be your court monitor for this weekend. Uh, a couple things I'd like to go over before we get started. First, I'd like to welcome you to HoopFest. I remember most of us have to go to work on Monday, so keep that in mind throughout the weekend. Um, you're going to see me. I'll be involved in the game. Uh, the following points should be addressed during your pregame conference. Introduce yourself to the players and the designated parent coach for youth courts. Confirm the teams have read and understand the rules. Confirm that the teams have read and signed the sign-in sheet and sportsmanship pledge. This form must be legibly signed prior to each game. Adult and high school court monitors need to explain that players will call their own fouls. You'll be there to resolve conflicts and to call any technical, intentional, or flagrant fouls. Encourage players to call fouls immediately after they occur, rather than waiting to see if the ball goes in the basket. Ticky-tack fouls are not part of hoop fest and will not be tolerated. Warn teams that you'll step in and overrule teams who constantly call these types of fouls. Youth court monitors need to explain to the players and the parent coach that you'll be calling all fouls and infractions. Encourage great sportsmanship and inform them that rough play is not a part of hoop fest. Explain the penalties resulting from technical, intentional, and flagrant fouls. Identify the team captain for the adult and high school courts and inform them that they'll be called upon to assist with control of their teammates and fans. Youth court monitors need to address the designated parent coach for assistance with players and parents. Remind teams that poor sportsmanship towards opposing players, HoopFest officials, or fans can result in the forfeiture of games and the possible removal from the tournament. It's in your best interest to lay down the law early and set a zero-tolerance policy for the entire weekend. The winning team will be responsible for taking the score sheet to the master scoreboard tent in the park immediately following the game. And encourage everyone to have fun and flip the coin to determine possession. The HoopFest bracket sheet is located in the back pocket of your binder. It's extremely important that the sheet is filled out completely following each game. Each game is numbered and has the start time and day listed next to it. Follow the bracket sheet numerically as it will guide you to the correct game. Winning teams will always move to the right on your bracket sheet and the losing team will always move down into the loser's bracket. Use the information on your bracket sheet to determine where to move teams. For example, the winner of game number one will move to the right on the space that reads winner one. Subsequently, move the loser of game one to the space below that reads loser one. Follow the information on the bracket sheet and you will not get lost. HoopFest is a double elimination tournament, meaning teams must lose twice before being eliminated from the tournament. However, teams that lose their first two games will be moved into our consolation bracket located down here. Only teams that lose their first two games will qualify for the consolation bracket. The winner of the consolation bracket will receive a t-shirt as well as the first and second place finishers. If a player is injured and in need of assistance, see if the player can make it to one of the medical tents on their own. If they cannot, contact your court marshal. Do not force a player off the court if he or she says they cannot move or if they are unresponsive. Do not administer first aid, but call for help. HoopFest has always placed an emphasis on good sportsmanship. As a monitor, your most important task is to ensure that games are being played within the spirit of HoopFest. The spirit of HoopFest is defined as competitive basketball played in an atmosphere in which all players, spectators, and volunteers treat each other with mutual respect, dignity, and sportsmanship. HoopFest is concerned about the growing trend of unsportsmanlike acts such as profanity, taunting, baiting, and trash talking. More than ever, HoopFest will be seeking the cooperation of all players and spectators to eliminate these disturbances from the tournament. As a monitor, you'll be asked to fully enforce the following calls. Regardless of age bracket, it's your responsibility to enforce the spirit of HoopFest, fair play, and safe basketball. Many players have jobs and other important commitments to fulfill following the HoopFest weekend. By eliminating rough play, you minimize the chances for injury. If play starts getting too rough, the court monitor must stop the game and require players to tone it down. Unnecessarily rough play or failure to obey your instructions will result in stiffer penalties. Technical fouls are fouls for unsportsmanlike acts such as taunting, baiting, or trash talking. 
game, you have no skill technique. Taunting and baiting involve derogatory remarks and or gestures that incite or insult a player. Trash talk involves a deeply personal, verbal, or nonverbal attack directed toward any person involved in the event. In extreme cases, the player may also be suspended from play, and the coach or fan may be removed from the court for the remainder of that game and possibly the rest of the tournament. An intentional foul is a foul when a player makes no intention to play the ball to prevent a player from scoring, dribbling, or passing. Intentional fouls can sometimes occur away from the ball by players who are cutting, screening, or rebounding. A flagrant foul is a foul so aggressive and physical that it's savage or violent in nature, and the fouled player is vulnerable to injury. Such fouls show a total disregard for the opponent. It is not necessarily intentional and does not need to be preceded by a warning from you. Players committing flagrant fouls will be removed from the game and possibly the remainder of the tournament upon further review of HoopFest tournament officials. A player who makes a basket and is fouled by an opponent who receives a technical, intentional, or flagrant foul for the infraction will receive the point for the made basket, an automatic one point for the infraction, and the team keeps possession of the ball. Your court marshal, dressed in a red t-shirt, is there to assist and support you during the weekend. Use this resource during heated games and if you feel you're beginning to lose control of your court. You can also request the presence of your marshal beforehand if you feel a game might be heated based on a previous situation. Monitors can quickly regain control of a court by appealing to the team captain for adult courts or the parent coach for youth courts. Ask these designated participants for assistance with players or crowd members who fail to adhere to the spirit of HoopFest. Get on top of situations early. Don't let your court get out of control. If your appeals fail to make a difference, call your court martial immediately to intervene. Officials at any level can expect to hear comments from players, coaches, and fans who disagree with certain calls. Objections come with the territory. However, you must stay aware and not permit these comments to cross the line. Failure to gain control of your court will make for a long weekend. Good courtside manner is a must. Players and coaches who respectfully approach you regarding a call are entitled to a reasonable explanation. Show a mutual respect for children as you would for adults. The player, coach, and team captain roles were instituted to create an avenue for monitors as well as participants to discuss concerns. Trouble generally starts during rough play away from the ball. If a monitor is aware of what's happening with all six players, player composure can be addressed early, before tempers flare. It is appropriate for a monitor to intercede and verbally address the nature of play away from the ball before trouble starts. In your bracket book is a yellow fold-out sportsmanship pledge, along with a carbon copy score sheet containing a sportsmanship pledge and waiver. Players are required to read and sign the sportsmanship pledge waiver. Take a moment to read aloud to the players and parent coach the yellow sportsmanship sheet. Remember to contact your marshal if you feel things are starting to get out of control. The marshal is there to lend support for potentially volatile situations. Don't wait for situations to get out of control. Keep an eye out at all times for players, fans, and coaches who are not demonstrating the spirit of HoopFest. HoopFest marshals, rapid response teams, and the Spokane Police Department have a right to disqualify teams, players, coaches, or fans for displaying unsportsmanlike behavior. As a monitor, your job is to point out these offenders. Teams or players removed from the tournament face a minimum one-year suspension from the event. HoopFest is counting heavily on our monitors to identify participants who fail to adhere to the spirit of HoopFest. The nature of the game can be physical. These players are working hard and no foul has occurred. That was a good example of rough play that would be legal. Positioning in basketball, getting a position and having contact is not necessarily a foul that would be called in hoop fest. So that's legal play. Now that's an example of a ticky-tacky foul that we do not want in HoopFest. That, that foul had nothing to do with the play, did not give an advantage to either player, and to come back and try to take the basket away by calling a foul that was nothing more than just barely a touch is ticky-tacky, and that is not in the spirit of HoopFest. So that's where a monitor needs to step in and not allow players to have ticky-tacky fouls. It's important to remember in HoopFest that we shoot all fouls, even offensive fouls. And sometimes players will want to wave free throws 
and play without uh, taking the free throws, and that's absolutely imperative that we do not allow that. We shoot all fouls in hoop fest. The only exceptions to this rule are technical, flagrant, and intentional fouls. An automatic one point is awarded to the opposing team, and no foul shot is taken. Whenever a free throw is attempted, all players must be well behind the free throw line and away from the shooter. No talking or distracting gestures will be tolerated. The penalty against the shooting team for this infraction will be the loss of the foul shot. The penalty against the defending team will be to award another free throw unless the original shot was made. The target score for all games is 20 points, meaning the first team to reach 20 points within 25 minutes of play is declared the winner. The team that reaches 20 points does not need to have a winning margin of two points or greater. The 25-minute clock is stopped during timeouts, and if the court monitor stops play for a player injury or any other unusual circumstance. If neither team has reached the score of 20 points, the court monitor shall stop the game after 25 minutes of play. If at this point of interruption a team has a lead of two or more points, that team is declared the winner. If neither team has at least a two-point advantage, the overtime rule will be activated. In overtime, the first team to score a total of two points more than the leading team score at the beginning of the overtime session or reach 20 points will be declared the winner. A coin toss will determine who gets the ball out of bounds first in overtime. Use these examples as a guideline. Score of 19 to 18, the first team to 20 wins. Score of 16 to 16, the first team to 18 wins. Score of 8 to 7, the first team to 10 wins. Score of 14 to 12, no overtime is needed since the leading team has at least a two point lead. Stalling is the act by a player or members of the same team purposely trying to run out the game clock. Characteristics of stalling would be excess passing or dribbling along the perimeter of the court. Players who are stalling make no concerted effort to score and will not attack the defense. Stalling is considered an unsportsmanlike act at Hoopfest. Monitors must warn the offending team and then issue a technical foul if the warning is ignored. Game times are very important so the tournament stays on schedule. Teams must be ready to begin play at their scheduled game times. Teams not at their court for the scheduled times are given a five minute grace period before a forfeit is enforced. On the occasion your court may fall behind schedule, monitors must never project alternate times for teams to return, as courts can often catch up quickly, causing teams to return late for their game. Always make teams aware that it's their responsibility to be ready to take the court at their regularly scheduled game time. If you're monitoring a six foot and under bracket and a player appears to be over six feet tall, contact your court martial to have the situation assessed. There may be a situation where a team was placed in a bracket even though a player is over six feet tall. Your marshal will be able to resolve this issue. Players listing inaccurate information on entry forms or not properly registered shall be disqualified from the tournament. If you have a question about the eligibility of a given player or another team protests a given player, contact your court martial for assistance. Monitor headquarters is located at 707 West Main, right across from River Park Square. You'll report here on the Thursday before Hoopfest. At Monitor headquarters, you'll receive your Nike gear, court equipment, and court location with map. Be sure to use this event map or contact the marshals at Monitor headquarters to learn where your court is located. Allow plenty of time on your first day to locate and get your assigned courts so that you're prepared to monitor. It's important to arrive at your courts early. All monitors will be given a court assignment at check-in. Some monitors will leave headquarters without the black equipment bag. In this situation, the court equipment will be waiting for you when you arrive at your designated location. Please be flexible regarding your court assignment. Marshals may need to move monitors from one court to another for a variety of reasons. Hoopfest will always attempt to place you on a court where you are comfortable and can have the best success. Court monitoring requires a significant amount of time during the weekend. Taking a few steps before you leave will enhance your experience. 
Please remember that while Hoopfest furnishes beverages and lunches, the monitors who have the best experience are those who bring small coolers and supplemental snacks. Hoopfest urges all of you to do so because the incredible logistics of providing food and water for more than 400 courts invariably run into unforeseen snags. Keep track of the impending weather. Plan on bringing a jacket, hat, or raincoat if the weather should call for it. And don't forget your sunscreen. Supplying yourself with these items each morning before you leave will ensure a successful weekend on the courts. Thank you for monitoring for Hoop Fest and have a fun weekend.